In my last video, I talked about how your vibration transforms your reality. Whatever frequency you're giving out, whatever vibration you're giving out determines what you're attracting to your life. Because the law of attraction states that like attracts like, right? So you're only going to get what you're a vibrational match with. And then I explain how it's your mind that influences your vibration by the thoughts that you think and the beliefs that you choose to accept. So really it's your mind that creates your reality. So now you just need to understand how to program your mind in order to control your vibration so that you can create the reality that you desire. Now, in order to know how to do that, you have to understand how the mind works first. So that's what I want to talk about in this video, how the mind works, and then I'll talk a little bit about how to actually program the mind. Now, the mind is a very complicated thing. I could probably go on for hours trying to explain to you how the mind works, but that's not necessary for this video. You just have to have a general understanding of how the mind works in order to know how to program it. So I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible so that you have a basic understanding of how the mind works and how to program it. Now let me give you this analogy. Think of the mind kind of like a computer. Now a computer has different parts to it, right? There's the keyboard and the mouse which are used to control the computer, and then you have the main part of the computer, the CPU, which also includes the hard drive where all the data is stored. Then you have the monitor which displays the visual output from the computer, and then you have the software which are all the programs that determines how the computer operates. Now, our mind also has different parts. There's the conscious mind, which controls our conscious thoughts and actions, and then there's our subconscious mind, which stores all our memories and beliefs. And then our beliefs are just the programs that control how we operate and how we perceive the world. So, our conscious minds would be like the controls of the computer, like the keyboard and the mouse are used to control the computer. The conscious mind controls our conscious thoughts and actions, okay? And I guess you can also include the RAM of the computer as part of this analogy as representing the conscious mind. It is the short-term memory, the working memory where all our conscious thoughts are processed, okay? And our subconscious mind would be like the hard drive. It is where we store all our data. All our memories and all our beliefs are stored in the subconscious mind. And our beliefs would be like our software, the programs that determine how we operate. Now the software of the computer determines how it operates, right? Whatever programs are installed in the computer determines what it can do and what is displayed on the monitor. Right? And at the same time, the beliefs that we have, the programs that we have, determine how we operate and what we experience in our lives. So for this analogy, we can say that the computer monitor represents our reality. Right? Whatever beliefs that we have, whatever programs we have, determine what the outcome is in our reality. Right? Just like how the programs that are installed in the computer determine the outcome on the monitor. Right? So the monitor represents our reality. Now we can probably categorize the different types of software into three main categories. There's the software that comes with the computer, right? When you first buy a computer, there's software that already comes installed in the computer, right? Like the operating system. And the operating system manages how the computer operates, right? And then you have third-party software, the application programs that you install after you buy the computer, right? In order to enhance the computer's abilities. And then there's the programs that are installed in the computer without you being aware of it, known as malware or viruses. Now, our beliefs, our programs, can also be categorized into three different categories. There's the programs that we are born with that manage our subconscious processes like breathing and digesting food. It manages our growth process, our healing process. These are all subconscious programs that we are born with. We don't have to learn how to breathe or how to grow. It just comes natural. We're born with these programs. So these programs would be like our operating system that manages how our body operates. Just like how the operating system of a computer manages how the computer operates. Then we have the beliefs that we develop from the time that we are born. These are beliefs that we accept about ourselves and about the world. These beliefs, these programs are like the application programs that we install in the computer after we buy it. Right? We develop these beliefs from the time that we are born. Then there are the beliefs that we develop unconsciously, maybe by uh, experiencing a traumatic event or by being manipulated by others. These unconscious beliefs would be like the malware or viruses that are unconsciously installed in the computer. So now you can kind of see the similarities between the mind and the computer, right? But keep in mind, I'm just using this analogy in order to give you a simplified explanation of how the mind works so you can understand how to program it. So don't take it literally. Our minds actually aren't like computers. It's just an analogy. Now let's say that you are the programmer. You control the computer, you control the keyboard, you control the mouse, you decide what programs are going to be installed in the computer, and you can even create your own custom programs to install into the computer. And whatever programs are installed in the computer will have an effect on the output on the monitor. So you, the programmer, controls the output on the monitor. Now let's say that you are also the programmer of your mind. 
which you actually are. You control your thoughts with your conscious mind, so you control the information that goes into your subconscious mind. You control which beliefs to accept. So whatever beliefs you choose to program your mind with will determine what you experience in your life. Because these programs control your senses, how you operate, how you behave, how you interact with others, your state of mind. It controls your vibration, which determines what you attract into your life. And it also controls how you perceive each experience. Now say for example you had this robot. Okay, and you install the software into this robot that determines what it does. Now the actions of this robot is dependent on the commands that are in the software, right? So say for example there was a command in the software that tells a robot not to cross a line. So if you drew a line on the ground, the robot would detect it and would not cross it. It would walk right up to the line and stop right before it reaches the line. It doesn't cross the line because the command was not to cross the line. The robot is a slave to the software. It only does what the software tells it to do or not to do. Now, our actions work in a similar way. Our actions and what we're capable of is determined by our beliefs, the programs that we have. So if you tell yourself that you can't do something or that you're not good enough and you choose to accept that as a belief, well, that's like inserting a command into your software telling you not to cross that line. If you choose to believe that you can't do something, well, you're not going to be able to do it because you're programming yourself with that belief. Now, let's say, for example, you were a runner and you wanted to run a mile in four and a half minutes. Now, I believe that the world record is three minutes and 43 seconds. So you know it's possible because people have ran it in less time. But let's say, for example, your best time was five minutes. And even then, you gave it everything that you had and you were completely exhausted by the end of that five minutes. So you don't think it's possible for you to run it in four and a half minutes because 30 seconds is a significant difference. And even then, you were completely exhausted when you ran it in five minutes. Now, if you choose to believe that, that it's impossible for you to run it in four and a half minutes, well then you're never going to be able to run it in that time. Your beliefs, your programs control your muscle movements, your breathing, your respiratory system, your stamina, your energy levels. So you're going to prevent all these things from reaching the necessary levels because you've given yourself the command not to cross that line. So no matter how many times you try, you're never going to be able to run a mile in four and a half minutes because you've set that limit. And it's not going to ever change until you change your belief. But once you change your belief, then the outcome will change. But also remember, like I said, your beliefs just don't control your abilities, but they also control your vibration, which determines what you attract into your life. And it also controls how you perceive each experience. So your beliefs, the programs that you have, determine what you experience in your reality. And if you understand that, then you can be a conscious creator of your own reality by controlling your programs in your mind. But if you don't understand that, then you won't be successful at creating the reality that you desire because your programs will always be influenced by other people. You won't be in control of it. Now let's say, for example, you wrote this program. And it's a very simple program and all I did was print the word hello on a computer screen. And you run the program, but rather than printing the word hello, it printed the word goodbye instead. Now when a program isn't operating properly, it's a clear indication that there's something wrong with the code in the program, right? So to fix the problem, you would go back into the code, try to find out where the mistake is, make the correction, and that'll change the output, right? Now let's say you were able to locate where the problem was. You realized that you mistakenly typed the word goodbye in the code rather than the word hello, and that's why it was printing goodbye rather than hello. So you make the correction, and you run the program again, and sure enough, it prints the word hello like it was intended. Now you were able to fix the problem because you understood that the output on the screen is only a result of the commands that are in the program. Now let's say for example that you refuse to go back and check the code because you believe that there was nothing wrong with your code. You believe that you wrote the code perfectly the way it was supposed to. So you're there scratching your head trying to figure out why it keeps giving you the wrong output. You keep running the program over and over again and it keeps giving you the same output. So you're there getting frustrated yelling at the computer monitor. Well, you can yell at the computer monitor all you want, it's not going to do anything. And you can run the program as many times as you want, you're just going to keep getting the same output. And it's not going to change until you correct the program. Now, this is basically what's happening when people play the victim and blame others for the bad things that happen in their life. Because they don't understand that their outer world is only a reflection of their inner thoughts and beliefs. They don't understand that their state of mind influences their vibration which determines what they attract into their life. They don't understand that they are the ones creating the experience. Either they don't understand or they refuse to believe it. Either way, they're unaware of what the cause of the problem is. So they live their lives every day 
getting upset and blaming others when they don't receive the desired outcome. They're completely oblivious to the fact that they're the ones creating the experience with the programs that are in their mind. Playing the victim and blaming others is like the computer programmer yelling at the computer monitor rather than going back and fixing the code. But that's how the majority of people still live their life, playing the victim and blaming others when they don't receive the desired outcome rather than going back and changing their thought patterns and their beliefs in order to get the desired outcomes. So to be a successful conscious creator of your reality and to get the desired outcomes, you have to understand that it's the programs in your mind that are creating your reality. So that if you're not getting the desired outcomes, you could go back and change your thought patterns and your beliefs in order to get the desired outcomes, right? Don't get upset at the reflection in the mirror. If you want to change the reflection in the mirror, then you have to change the man in the mirror first. So now that you have a better understanding of how the mind works, we could go over how to actually program the mind in order to get the desired outcome. So let's get into that, how to program the mind. Now to program a computer, you would type up some code to create a program and then install it into the computer, right? Well, I mean, it's a lot more complicated than that, but in the general sense, that's the gist of it, right? Now that's how you program a computer, but how do you program the mind? Well, one of the ways to program the mind is through repetition, by thinking a thought over and over again until it becomes a belief, or by performing a certain action over and over again until it develops into a habit. Think about when we're trying to memorize something. You would read something over and over again until it becomes programmed in the mind, right? It becomes a memory. Or like when we're practicing something like playing a sport, we would practice and practice until those actions become second nature, right? So you could program the mind through repetition. Right? So to develop a certain belief, you would think a thought or say an affirmation repeatedly and over time it will develop into a belief. So the thoughts that you are thinking are programming the mind, if you keep enforcing them by thinking them over and over. You can think of a thought as like one line of code of a program. Now it takes a collection of multiple lines of code to create a program, right? But just that one line of code by itself isn't really going to do anything, just like how one thought is just a thought. But if you think that thought repeatedly until it develops into a belief, that's what gives it its power. So that's one of the ways to program the mind through repetition. Now another way to program the mind is by bypassing the conscious mind and delivering suggestions to the subconscious mind. Now think of the conscious mind as kind of like a gatekeeper, right? Kind of like the security guard that determines what can pass and what can't. Now if a security guard falls asleep on post, then anyone and anything can gain access without them knowing it, right? Now think about how hypnosis works. Now when somebody is being hypnotized, they're usually told to focus on something, right? Maybe something like this, or a swinging pendulum. Well the reason behind this is because when somebody is focusing their attention on something, say a swinging pendulum, then their conscious mind is distracted, it's not alert, or in other words, it's kind of being put to sleep. So with the conscious mind distracted, the hypnotist will pass suggestions to the person, bypassing the conscious mind, going into the subconscious mind, and those suggestions become a part of those person's beliefs. And the same thing also goes with self-hypnosis, except with self-hypnosis, you are the one giving yourself suggestions while you're in a relaxed state. You are the one doing the programming. Now, what's also happening in this situation is the person being hypnotized is falling into an alpha brainwave state. Now, there are four main types of brainwaves. Beta, alpha, theta, and delta. And whichever brainwaves are dominant at any moment will determine a person's state of mind in that moment. Beta brain waves are associated with being consciously alert or engaged in active thinking. Alpha brain waves are associated with a state of physical and mental relaxation. Theta brain waves are associated with deep relaxation or a meditative state. And delta brain waves are associated with deep sleep. And it is also said that alpha brain waves are the gateway to the subconscious mind because they lie at the base of our conscious awareness. So when a person is in an alpha brain wave state, their subconscious mind is susceptible to programming and that's why a hypnotist is able to program somebody when they are in that state. Now this is also what's happening when we watch TV. You ever notice that when people watch TV they kind of turn into these mindless zombies completely fixated on the screen? Well that's because when we watch TV we stop thinking. So our brain activity slows down from from a beta brainwave state to an alpha brainwave state. So we fall into this hypnotic state where we are susceptible to programming. And that's why the TV is one of the main tools that is used for mind control, because we are in a hypnotic state when we watch TV. So just keep that in mind for all you TV watchers. Once you turn on that TV and you start to zone out and become fixated on that screen, well that's just like you plugging into the matrix and allowing yourself to be programmed. Because when you're in that hypnotic state, you're giving access to your subconscious mind and allowing yourself to be programmed with whatever messages are being delivered through that TV screen. 
Why do you think corporations spend millions and millions of dollars on advertising and marketing? To program us into wanting their products so they can get us to spend our money. Okay? And they program us through repetition. We become programmed when we see the commercials over and over again. We become programmed when we see their logos repeatedly. When we're walking down the street or driving in our cars and we see their advertisements, their billboards over and over again, we're becoming programmed. And even if we don't consciously notice their advertisements, our subconscious mind is still picking up on it. All this is what I meant when I was talking about beliefs that we develop unconsciously that make us behave in strange ways. Kind of like the malware and viruses that are unconsciously installed in the computer that make the computer behave in strange ways. I mean, just look at how crazy the world has become. All you have to do is turn on the news to see all the crazy ways that people are acting nowadays. That's because our minds have been polluted with all these programs from watching TV and browsing the internet, turning us into ruthless, mindless consumers. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate, so we can buy shit we don't need. Just look at how people behave during Black Friday. We become bombarded with Black Friday advertisements in order to kickstart the Christmas shopping season. People act like animals fighting over material things because they've been programmed to desire these products so much that they will fight for it. People behave in strange ways because they have too many viruses installed into their software, metaphorically speaking, and they're not even conscious of it. So those are the two main ways to program the mind, through repetition and by bypassing the conscious mind and feeding suggestions to the subconscious mind. So now that you understand that it's your mind that creates your reality, and now you have a basic understanding of how the mind works and how to program it, okay? So now you can consciously create your reality to whatever you desire. It's pretty simple, right? Well, if it's that simple, then why do so many people fail at it? Well, that's just it. It's, the concept is that simple, but really it's not that easy. There's two main reasons why people fail. One, they quit too soon. Because like I said, the mind is programmed through repetition, right? So if you think a thought over and over again, but quit before it develops into a belief, well then that thought loses its power. So it never becomes programmed into the mind. Another reason is that you may already have a contradicting belief in place. You can't have two beliefs that conflict with each other. Say for example, you can't believe that you are successful and believe that you are a failure at the same time. You can only believe one or the other. So if you already have a belief in place that you are a failure and you try to reprogram yourself to believe that you are successful, well then you might experience resistance from your mind at first. Now it is possible to program your mind with a new belief if you already have a contradicting belief in place. It just takes a little more work. And those are some of the things that I'll be going over in my next video. How to get around those things so that you can be more successful or programming the mind more effectively. So check that video out if you want to learn more on how to program the mind. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that video in the description below. And if you thought this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And leave your questions, comments, and concerns in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you on the next video.